Hello viewers, this is Everything Everywhere with your host Joha and you're watching So today I have a special guest with me, she's from Burundi and she's going to be telling us about her recent experiences since she got here So tell us briefly about yourself So uh, my name is Saima Karimpo and I'm uh, 20 years old I'm from Burundi. I was born and raised in Burundi. So I moved here in Rwanda since uh, September 2017. I'm a student at uh, Mount Kenya University studying uh, communication and mass media. Yeah. So tell us why you moved to Rwanda and not Uganda or any other country. Rwanda was my first choice because uh, it's close to Burundi. I'm actually the kind of person who cannot really stay away from family, so Rwanda was actually the best choice I have ever made. So Saima, tell us, since you got here, what places have you visited so far? So far, I've been to uh, Muhazi. Well, yes, it's Muhazi. I've been to uh, some great places in, in Kigali, like uh, there's Pilipili, <laughs> there's uh, Inema, because I love art, so so far Inema is like my favorite place to go and uh, what else yes I've been to some uh, great restaurant as well where they have some great food and yeah so far that's I've just been here for four months actually so I'm still getting to visit places and so on okay so was it hard adjusting Adjusting in Kigali somehow, but not really. Like, I've faced some uh, difficult parts, but some easy parts as well. Some of the hard parts was that uh, the language. Not a lot of people here speak, uh, like, going around, you don't really find people speaking French. Or, okay, they, most of them speak in Yaronda. But from Burundi, I do understand Kirundi. But it's somehow, reaching in Rwanda, I have found out that it's somehow different. Kirundi and Kinyarwanda, it's somehow different. You have some words that they, they used to tell me and I didn't understand. There's one word that I have in my mind that I, they have always told me and I've always been struggling, like trying to find out what it means. And that's when they, they want to say that it's cold. Yakonje, <laughs> it's something like that. Okay. So usually in Kirundi you say Yakanye, but in Kenya Rwanda is Yakonje. That's one of the most difficult things in Rwanda. <laughs> so Saima, you said that you're a student at Mount Kenya. So what else are you doing apart from studying? Okay, so uh, apart from studying, things that I do is uh, maybe like reading books and writing. I love writing. Yeah. Saima, what are you writing right now? And when did you start writing? So right now I'm writing uh, an article about uh, actually the, the stories about a young kid that uh, we had helped in Burundi. So I got the inspiration for him, from him and started writing about him. Yeah. Tell us, when did you start writing and um, were you writing in Burundi as well or did you just start recently? I started writing when I was still a kid but uh, it wasn't uh, public writing if I can say so. I just used to write for myself. It was some uh, short stories or uh, I used to have uh, some journal journals since I was a kid but uh, since I came in Rwanda, as I study uh, communication and mass media, they have uh, encouraged me to uh, encourage me and teach me as well how to write articles, how to uh, like uh, translate your thoughts into writing, if I can say so. So uh, yeah, so if I if I talk about writing articles, then I have just started now. In fact. I have finished writing my first article, which is about um, a kid in Burundi that I had, we had found, me and my family. He was uh, actually lost from uh, Congo. 
He came in Burundi with his uncle, hoping to have a better life. That was back in uh, 2000, uh, maybe 2014 or 13, because I was around uh, 13 or 14 years old. So the kid was lost uh, coming in Bujumbura. Knowing nowhere, we uh, luckily found him uh, on the street. We took him home. He stayed uh, with us for like uh, two weeks. But then we had to, uh, to, uh, to tell the Cong Congo embassy about him. They sent him back and all. So the, I got the inspiration of uh, this story to write my first article, which will soon hopefully be published. So just in case it's published, then I'll sh share it on my social network. I mostly use the use Instagram for for my to share my personal activities, because there's not, not not only writing, but there are other things that I do apart from writing. Yeah. So what are those things that you do? The uh, I'm more in uh, social work. As I'm from uh, a poor country, I do uh, help a lot the kid there, the people in need. It can be kids, uh, young mothers, families, or sick person, anything. So I've started this uh, social work since uh, it's been now uh, four years. It all started uh, at home. My parents. Uh, teaching us to uh, share and help the poor. So we started like that and then uh, recently I joined a non, non-profit organization in Bujumbura. But as I was moving in Rwanda, I had to uh, quit that organization. But at the same time, I didn't want to, uh, to stop doing what I was doing since, uh, since I was a kid. So I came in Rwanda thinking that I would keep on doing the same thing here, helping the poor here. But reaching in Rwanda, I saw that things are different here. We don't really, it's not like in Burundi, we don't really uh, see uh, poor kids on the roads or street kids or people in need. We don't really find them on the road, unlike in Burundi. So what I started doing here is uh, writing. Telling, telling story, because if there's one thing I truly believe, it's storytelling. I took advantage of the teaching I get from school to start telling stories to the people in Rwanda and uh, all over the world, because I shared them on Instagram. And uh, every four months, as I go back in Burundi, I uh, prepare an event. It can be mostly it was personal I used to just save money save money and then prepare an event here but uh, recently since I've started posting on social media I've started uh, getting people who were interested in, in what I was doing and wanted to get involved as well so in fact my last event in Burundi which was uh, a month ago a month ago uh, I had posted on uh, social so on Instagram uh, an event that we had done at home it was during uh, Christmas we had called around uh, 20 kids to have uh, lunch at home so when I posted in on Instagram there's a, a girl who texted me she she's Burundian she studied but she studies in China so she told me that she also do the same thing as me. In fact, she told me that uh, the week the week later, she had planned an event uh, in one of the up countries in Burundi. It was like one hour of ride. So she asked me if I wanted to join. Of course, I didn't say no. I didn't say no. It was a pleasure for me. So we went there. We uh, she wasn't there. She was still in China and the event was just successful it was beautiful there, were, there was around uh, 150 kids and it was just awesome so the reason why i'm sharing this story is to tell you that uh, the impact or the advantage if i can say so of uh, sharing sharing what you do with the, with the outside world 
because of some simple picture or because I don't have, it's not like I have a big organization by myself, it's just personal work that I do. Because of sharing them, I have got some people wanting, wanting to get involved as well. And for me, that's something really uh, helpful and, and great as well. Yes. Um, tell us, why do you think storytelling is important? Uh, I believe in storytelling because um, it's all about sharing stories, sharing uh, personal experience, sharing thoughts, and it doesn't require much. It's not... Uh, storytelling can be uh, can be like you can just talk about something tell a story about someone that you know or write a book or an article so it doesn't require much it's just it, it just requires uh, motivation inspiration and the great thing is that uh, in today's world through your stories you can you can share them to a million of people all around the world yeah so do people ever discourage you like for posting my stories yeah your stories uh okay so as i said i mostly use instagram to post uh, the events that we do or yeah mostly the events that we do and yes i do get uh i do get some positive reactions some uh, people encouraging me or people uh, wanting uh, to join what i do which is great, but at the other part we have some people trying to discourage me or uh, trying to, uh, to criticize what I do. For example, uh, they can just say that I'm trying to show off, I'm trying to act as a hero who's trying to save the world and all, which is not true. If I do so, if I uh, share every picture on my Instagram, is to raise awareness, to show the world that there are some people doing doing things that we can. Like I'm not. I'm just 20 years old. I don't have a job yet. Um, but I still try to do uh, as much as I can to help those in need. So if I share, is to show that, that you can do little if you want to. If I share on social media, is to, as I said, share awareness, uh, share my story and get people involved in what I do. Yeah. So can you tell us where you share your things so we can follow up? For the moment, it's just on Instagram. I, don't, I would love to have a blog but uh, I'm still working on it but uh, for, for now you can just follow up on Instagram yeah so as usual this is Precision TV so remember to like comment and subscribe and uh, we were here on this show with Saima and don't forget to follow her Saima Karimpur to follow up on what she has been doing on her social work her articles and all the above <laughs>